When his wounded hand touched mine, when his wounded hand touched mine, Jesus set me free for all eternity. When his wounded hand touched mine, when his wounded hand Touch mine when his wounded hand touch mine. Jesus set me free for all eternity when his wounded hand touch mine. When his wounded hand touch mine when his wounded hand touch mine. Jesus set me free for all eternity when his wounded hand touched mine. When his wounded hand touched mine, when his wounded hand touched mine, Jesus set me free for all eternity when his wounded hand Touch my Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord for His presence. We thank God that we can feel His presence. We thank the Lord that His presence is with us. And in His presence, there is fullness of joy. And that's important because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we need His strength. I need His strength more and more every day. Now that's my stand. That's my uh, conviction. And I hope that you see your need as well. We need Him. We need the Lord. Now, in the days ahead, things are going to accelerate on such a on such a rate that you just you would not even you can't even imagine how quickly things are about to begin to accelerate. A few days ago, the Lord spoke to me, gave me a phrase, two phrases actually, but the first phrase he gave me was it's all about to change. That was the first thing. And then a little while later, he gave me the other one, and that was suddenly without warning. Suddenly without warning. So, I know that things are about to get very ugly down here. I know the scripture says that the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. But I also know the other side of that verse of scripture. The first part of that scripture says rejoice. Rejoice, O ye heavens, you that dwell in them. So I know there's two sides. There are those that are going to be rejoicing and there are those that are going to be left behind that will be on this earth when the devil comes down onto this earth having great wrath. So, I've entitled this message this afternoon, Preparing to Escape All These Things. Now, Jesus said to us, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, Look up, for your redemption draws near. He also said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. So, we are advised, 
counseled by the Lord. Speaking to the Laodicean church age, he says, If any man hear my voice. And I know the church as a whole is not listening today. Very few have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And so the Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, he will come in and to him and sup with him. And that's what this ministry is all about. It's about being equipped for the ministry. To be equipped, not only for the ministry, but equipped to overcome the dragon and all his wrath. Now the church is asleep as a whole, but there is a remnant that is going to be the first fruits and is going to escape even the wrath of Satan. However, this remnant will have to pass through the heavenlies on their way to the throne and be met with the force of darkness, the dragon and his angels are going to put up quite a fight. There's going to be a war. And Michael is going to stand up, thank God, and he and his angels. And there's going to be a tremendous war in the heavenlies. Now listen. While the church is sleeping, whether you understand it or not, while the disciples slept, Jesus Christ was in a war in the garden. Are you listening? While Peter, James, and John slept, Jesus was praying in agony. As it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You have to understand that he was in a war. All the hell came against Jesus in that garden. There's a war on for your soul. Now, the devil couldn't have ever stole Jesus' soul, but he certainly could have tried to keep him from getting to Calvary. There was a tremendous opposition that Jesus was met with. Folks, we're not fighting with flesh and blood. And just as the angels came and ministered to Jesus... The Lord said there's ministering spirits to those that are heirs of salvation. And when you find yourself in that place like Jesus, that great struggle, not my will, but thine be done, the Lord will send the angels to minister to you. Give you strength. Because the scripture says when Jesus was praying in agony, listen, he was already praying in agony, and then he prayed more earnestly. So you may be praying in agony and want to quit, want to give up, but the angels will come and minister to you, give you strength so that you can pray through. Not my will, but thine be done. If you're going to escape in this hour, 
And I say our because the days are coming to an end. We hear that term over and over. We hear people saying that. We're in the last days. We're in the last days. And I even hear some saying, we're in the last of the last days. But I believe we're coming down to the hour. No longer days. The hour in which is called the Great Tribulation. The Tribulation Hour is at the door. The seven years that Daniel speaks of, we are at the door, people. It's at the door. We are coming down to the wire, to the beginning of the seven years. The church thinks they're going to be raptured before the seven years begins. What they don't understand is, is that the church is going to be left behind, is going to go through great persecution to wake them up. They'll be right here for the first three and a half years under the wrath of Satan. But God is going to keep them from the face of the serpent. God's going to protect the church. He's going to give the church two wings of a great eagle, like he gave to children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. God is going to bring a deliverance to the church during the first three and a half years. Under the wrath of Satan, God is going to tenderly watch over his people. you got to understand, the Lord is not making you stay behind, or he's not punishing you. That's not why he's leaving you behind. It's because you don't have what you need to be caught up. So you've got to be filled with the Spirit. And to the measure you're filled with the Spirit, that's as far as you're going. That's why the church is only going to be caught up in the middle of the air. Because they don't have the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Where there's a remnant, the first fruits, those that are the bride of Christ, that are becoming one with Jesus Christ. They will have the fullness of the Spirit and be able to have the fuel, the oil, the Holy Ghost to get all the way to the throne. But the church, the wise virgins, they're not going to wake up until the midnight hour. Are you listening? I didn't make this up. It's right there. You know. You've been saying it for years. You've been hearing preachers say it for years. The wise virgins slept. But now put it together. Do you really believe it? That the church are the wise virgins? If you really believe that, which it is true, but if you really believe that, then you have to admit that it says the wise virgins did not arise and, and, and trim their lamps until the midnight hour. At midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. Why midnight? What's the significance of midnight? See, the Lord gave us... Well, he gave us a clue. But he also... There's something hidden in Luke chapter 12 that most don't see. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will also your heart be. He said, let your lights be burning and your loins girded about. Right? Now, just a few verses down, what does he say? If he shall come in the second watch or the third watch but how come there's no mention of the first watch see the first watch takes place between 6 p.m. in the evening and 9 p.m. he's not coming during the during that time that's the first watch he's not coming in the first watch no need to come in the first watch because there were those